first of all, just to go through why you might want to do uh, this rather than a popliteal and saphenous higher up the leg. And the main thing is you can produce almost the same degree of post-op analgesia um, whilst allowing a patient to mobilise, which is a, more of an issue for bilateral surgery, obviously. But you can still get 18 to 24 hours of post-op analgesia uh, with this block. Um, the one important thing to remember, of course, is that um, uh, for awake surgery, you need to have the tourniquet properly around the ankle as opposed to any higher up um, on the leg. So we're going to go through tibial, saphenous, superficial and deep perineal and then sural. And we'll do it in that order because that's generally the order that I'd block them in. So first of all, the general setup. I'm right-handed. Uh, I like to do as much kneeling as I can with my right hand. Um, so if we set the patient up, so I'm standing or sitting on their left hand side, I can block all the nerves on both feet from this position, which minimizes the amount of moving equipment around the room that there has to be. Um, so to start with, tibial, it's, it's a little bit of a misnomer to call this an ankle block because most of the injections that we're doing are actually substantially more proximal to the ankle than the, the classic technique. And there are a couple of reasons for this, but the, the, the main ones are that um, around the bony prominences of the malleoli, it's very difficult to get good uh, skin contact. Um, so coming more proximally allows a better contact uh, um, across softer tissue. And also, for the tibial component at least, um, if you go very distally, with an in-plane approach, uh, your needle would have to come in through the Achilles tendon, which probably isn't particularly advisable, it's also more uncomfortable for the patient and it, um, it ties the, the needle quite significantly um, at the insertion point, making it more difficult to manoeuvre. So <clears throat> we're going to come slightly above the medium malleolus, probably five, five or so centimetres down, and um, we're going to start identifying all of the structures because we can see everything, um, uh, see and identify everything here. So. This structure, here, so I should say, this is anterior, this is posterior. And anteriorly we've got tibia, and then there are two tendons, one here and one here. This is tibialis posterior, and this is flexor digitorum longus. And the belly that you see, this, this is muscle here, and that is associated with the tendon of flexor digitorum longus. So it's, it still has a muscular component at this level. Um, if we move a little bit more posteriorly, we can see another muscle here. This is soleus, and part of the Achilles tendon here. Uh, and that means that the muscle deep here is flexor halicis longus. And we can demonstrate that. I'll just put the depth down slightly. If you could wiggle your big toe, sir. You can, you can see the fibres within that yep. moving when I do that. Okay, so we're now going to concentrate um, around the vessels here. We can see the artery. If I ease off in the pressure, you can see two accompanying vessels. And I actually know from um, having scanned Sarah earlier that the tibial nerve is best visualised slightly more proximally up, up her leg. And you can see it as this triangular structure just posterior to the vessels here. Um, and, and there you can see the, the margins of it very nice and clearly. It's uh, most commonly a, a fairly triangular um, uh, structure. And we bring the nerve, the needle in from a posterior approach. So you'd expect to see it approaching in this direction here, coming down to the, the bottom angle here, and then infiltrating posteriorly and anteriorly, usually using somewhere in the region of five mils to get uh, good circumferential spread. Any questions about the tibial nerve? Okay, so moving swiftly on to, um, to the uh, saphenous. Now, saphenous is slightly contentious whether it needs to be done at all because in a significant uh, portion of patients it doesn't really supply anything distal to the medial malleolus. So you may or may not need to do it. But let's, just for the sake of argument, say we're going to, to cover it. It's, it's a very small nerve, 
and I, in, in the majority of people it cannot be easily visualized um, quickly. So rather than try to, or rather than, than spend time trying to see something which may not actually be there, um, the, the aim that we have is to do a perivenous injection. So just applying very gentle pressure, um, we're visualizing a tibia or medial malleolus here, and we can see the uh, great saphenous uh, vein here. And what we're, we're just going to trace that vein approximately up the leg slightly so that it's, it's overlying um, a softer tissue so that uh, it's, it's, it's a little bit easier to, to visualize well. And you may convince yourself that that's a nerve, it may or may not be, but we're just going to do an in-plane approach um, doing a perivenous injection. And putting a needle down to about the five o'clock position, you'll only need one to two mils. Um, I'm not going to say anything more about that.